Hi, I'm Eric Waugh. I was born in Montreal in 1963. Uh, shortly thereafter, my family moved to Winnipeg, Manitoba. I'm the youngest of five. I had a really great upbringing and grew up in a, in a very happy home. My earliest memory of any artistic inspiration uh, happened in grade three. This is when a, a rolling art gallery in the form of a yellow school bus featuring the works of uh, famed Canadian artists, the group of seven, show up in front of our school. My classmates and I, we get on the bus, we learn about the artists, uh, we learn about their techniques, and our assignment was to go back into class and recreate some of those artworks. And that was something that I really, really enjoyed. And that may have been the exact moment that I wanted to be an artist. Shortly after Eric's first memorable art experience in Winnipeg, his family was on the move again. This time, it was to Burlington, Ontario. At age 11, although he was still very interested in art, his artistic talents took a turn towards music. All throughout his teenage years, Eric spent most of his free time writing music and playing the guitar in a band with his brother Bruce. At the age of 18, I decided that school was not for me. I just wanted to get out into the world and start creating. Waugh started up his own design firm and began creating all kinds of fun and innovative products. Shortly after, a large company in Toronto hired him to design products and packaging for them. This hands-on experience would prove invaluable. After a couple of years with that firm, I decided it was time for me to go out on my own and be a freelance graphic designer. Uh, little did I know at the time what was just about to happen. I was struggling to pay the rent uh, a little bit, and I turned to my brother for some advice, and um, it was actually his suggestion to put down the pens, pencils, and rulers, and pick up a paintbrush, and start painting. With $20 to my name, I went to an art store, and I picked up uh, one piece of art paper, three tubes of paint, and a brush. Um, I went home and uh, proceeded to create the first painting that I've pretty much ever done in my life. Um, an hour or so later, I got a little frustrated. I ended up putting it in a clean garbage bag and I hid it in the back of my closet. It was probably a little over two weeks later. Uh, I brought it back out and um, proceeded to finish the painting. I had to finish this painting. Wall was a couple of months behind on his rent. Bills were really piling up, but he knew that this was his chance. Although Eric always wanted to be a fine artist, he also knew the word starving and the word artist always went together. He never thought it would be a career path, but at that very moment he thought, what do I have to lose? So with my first painting in hand, I brought it to a gallery that my brother suggested, Progressive Editions in Toronto. Uh, I took it down there and Michael Havers, the owner, took one look at the painting and he says, not too bad. Uh, I believe there's room for improvement. So why don't you create a dozen or so paintings, bring them back in a couple weeks and uh, we'll go from there. Waugh said, well, that sounds like a great opportunity, but the problem is I'm broke. I have no money to buy paint, canvas, anything. Haber said, that's not a problem. He told Waugh he had an account at an art store down the street and to pick up whatever he needed and come back and see him in a couple of weeks. So I got busy. I created 12 paintings. I put my heart and soul into these. Um, I dropped them off at his gallery a couple weeks later. He wasn't there at the time. Maybe two weeks have passed, I still haven't heard from him. Then finally, I get the phone call. And um, I remember it like it was yesterday. Um, he says, congratulations, you're an artist. And I'm um, like, what does that mean? And he says, just what I said, you're an artist. You know, the works are great. Um, I sold them, come down and pick up your check. At that moment, Eric realized not only is he able to pay the rent,
but also his dream of becoming a fine artist had just come true. Eric knew if he was going to be successful as a fine artist and one who was self-taught, his work had to be unique. He didn't want to be influenced by other artists. So he stayed away from art galleries, museums, libraries, and anywhere else he might be influenced by the work of other artists. Working in acrylics and mixed media, Waugh experimented with a multitude of techniques and imagery to achieve a distinctive look all his own. Eric painted mainly abstract works with a positive, uplifting theme throughout. He enjoyed tremendous success in his very first year as a fine artist, producing well over 500 original works of art. In 1989, Waugh moved to Montreal with his girlfriend and got married that fall. By this time, Waugh's work was in high demand, and he continued to experiment with various techniques. Eric always wanted to keep things fresh and innovative. He rarely had an artistic block. When one style seemed to be less popular, he would introduce another unique style right behind it. In 1990, Eric became a father for the first time, welcoming his son Alex into the world. The inspiration Waugh received during that joyful time was unlimited. On countless days, you could find him in a studio holding a brush in one hand and Alex in the other. The demand for Eric's work continued to rise as he created well over 1,000 paintings per year. In 1993, Eric's second son, Andrew, was born. He realized how lucky he was to have two healthy and happy children. He wanted to start giving back to children's charities. In the summer of 1995, Wall was watching a CBS movie of the week called Angelie's Secret. This was the story of a brave 11-year-old girl, born with AIDS, who found the courage to reveal her secret to her friends, classmates, and her whole town. In the documentary, Angelie was attending a very special place called Camp Heartland in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. This camp was offering children infected or affected by HIV, AIDS, a week of unconditional love, support, and fun, not fear. Wall was very touched by the story, immediately contacted the camp and arranged a visit. Eric spent a weekend at the camp to meet the children, as well as the founder, Neil Willinson, to get some artistic inspiration. It was a weekend he would never forget. Wa headed back to his studio in Montreal and created a painting called Hero, which depicted an adult figure comforting a child. Eric had the image published as a fundraising poster for the camp to help bring more children to this special retreat. A few months passed, and then Eric had a truly epic fundraising idea. He wanted to recreate the Hero poster onto more than 80,000 square feet of canvas. This feat would place him in the Guinness Book of World Records and ultimately bring much needed attention and funds to Camp Heartland. Around the same time, in late 95, during a drug-induced dream because of painkillers from dental surgery, Waugh came up with a unique take on the stick figure drawing, a modern interpretation of ancient cave paintings. Waugh showed the first three examples of this style to his distributor, friends, and family. It was unanimous. Waugh had a hit on his hands. It was a style that had mass appeal among art buyers. It had a sophisticated, minimalist look with a playful, positive feel throughout. He started off with mainly dancing figures and then quickly expanded into a multitude of characters doing various things like musicians playing instruments, figures holding hands, a woman holding an umbrella, to a man giving his loved one a single flower. Abstract imagery also emerged from this style and found great success throughout the art market. Waugh's stick figure style was popular for many years and is still in demand to this day. In the spring of 96, Waugh's world's largest painting project was getting off the ground. He had already created a couple of hundred of the 3,000 5 by 5 foot panels needed to create the painting when he got word that a group of artists had beaten him to it. Eric was devastated. So much planning, time, effort, and money had gone into it. To see it all come crashing down put Eric into a rage, ripping the 400 square foot custom easel he created off the wall and into a heap of metal, damaging many of the paintings in the process. 
Eric quickly regretted his actions only a few moments later. Within a span of a few minutes, he came up with the idea of creating the painting 100% by himself, with no help from anyone. He contacted the people at Guinness Book and found out that there was no such category, world's largest painting created by one artist. They told him that he can create one before anyone else. The record is his. With the modification to the size, Wall was back on track, creating a mammoth 41,400 square foot work of art. 1997 saw the birth of his third son, Matthew. This was a significant time in Eric's career. This was the point where Waugh's trademark series of gold dots he had done on every painting he had created from virtually day one finally had significance to it. Waugh decided at that time to place a series of five golden dots on his paintings to represent his family. In 2001, Waugh was frustrated at how long the world's largest painting project was taking and decided he had to push things through. Waugh joined forces with the Starlight Children's Foundation to help with public relations. Eric also got in touch with Art.com, proposed a plan to finish the painting and for Art.com to sell sections of the painting to raise funds for the charities. On September 10th, Waugh arranged a deal with the North Carolina Museum of Fine Art to display the painting on their grounds on December 1st, 2001, World AIDS Day. But on the morning of September 11th, it all came to an abrupt halt. Waugh decided to push forward. He knew that the world needed a feel-good story and did not want to let the charities down. But there was one problem. Eric still had almost one-third of the painting to go and only had two months to do it. He got busy, working day and night, some nights not sleeping at all. It came right down to the wire. The last panel was still wet when it was put into one of the three transport trucks needed to ship the painting from his studio in Montreal to the North Carolina Museum of Fine Art. December 1st, 2001. Six years after Waugh started the painting in Montreal, Hero. The 41,400 square foot work of art was about to make its debut with the help of a 200-member assembly team that would tile the canvas panels on the lawn of the North Carolina Museum of Fine Art. It was a stunning day, a beautiful 74 degrees and not a cloud in the sky. It took the assembly team close to two hours to lay down the 1,656 5 foot by 5 foot canvas panels and put them in place. The last panel was nowhere to be found. The crowd grew anxious. Where could it be? Suddenly, an armored truck came over the hill. Lights were flashing and sirens were blazing. It pulled up next to the painting. The back door opened and the last panel was delivered safe and sound. Eric had his boys, Alex, Andrew and Matt, each took a corner and gently put it into place. The crowd erupted in applause. A representative measured the painting and declared Hero the world's largest painting created by one artist and then presented Eric with the official certificate. From exhaustion and an overwhelming sense of accomplishment, Eric fell to his knees. Six years of blood, sweat, and tears finally caught up to him. He faced many obstacles throughout the years working on the painting and could not believe that this day had finally come. Waugh's efforts brought a great deal of international media exposure. He found himself in People magazine and in hundreds of newspapers across the country. Every major network covered the event, including CNN and a live broadcast on NBC's Today Show. Two thousand two was another turning point in Waugh's career. He was approached by art agents Jim and Karen Carter in Atlanta. The Carters were looking for an artist that could share the stage with musicians and create art live in front of an audience. Wall was intrigued by the idea, but said he was going to need some time to train himself how to paint with an easel. Wall had traditionally created his artwork for the past 15 years on a flat surface. On November 15, 2002, Waugh created his first live work of art titled Jazzin' It Up. That day set off a firestorm of live painting events over the next few years. 
Waugh painted live on stage to many notable musicians, including Tony Bennett, the Doobie Brothers, Nelly Furtado, the Gypsy Kings, Herbie Hancock, Sheila E., and many more. At the beginning of 2004, Waugh brought his uplifting art to the cruise ship art market. Eric realized this was the perfect venue for his art. By nature, cruise passengers are a very happy bunch, looking to have fun and enjoy life to the fullest. Little did Eric know at this time that he would find inspiration from these passengers and the wonderful places he visited around the world. His art took on a joyful and whimsical feel during this time, and over the next several years, this would prove to be one of the happiest times of his life. In November of 2004, Waugh's biggest fan, his dad, Richard Douglas Waugh, passed away. Eric was not prepared for this sudden loss and had a hard time dealing with it. Eric learned many of his skills from his father and he was a constant source of inspiration. There was no one on the planet prouder of his success. It took Eric over 10 years to be able to look at his favorite photo of himself and his father. Over the next couple of years, Waugh continued creating art, cruising around the world and creating art live at many different high-profile events, including the Larry King Cardiac Foundation Gala in Washington, D.C. Waugh painted live to Donna Summer, as well as presenting Larry King with an original painting called The King of Hearts to honor his 50 years in television. At the beginning of 2006, Waugh wanted to change things up a bit. It was time to go out on his own and represent himself. He started creating more complex artwork. This involved creating several painted wooden layers, creating a three-dimensional version of his paintings. He felt that this look really made his visions come to life. This work caught the eye of renowned art dealer Nan Miller of Rochester, New York. The Nan Miller Gallery had been representing Waugh's work for many years and thought it would be a good time to represent his three-dimensional works. In 2007, Waugh was asked by the ABC television program Extreme Makeover Home Edition to participate in the season finale featuring Camp Heartland. Eric was asked to paint the back of a stage in a new recreation center they were going to build at the camp in Carmel, New York. Eric spent a grueling but incredible week creating his vision on stage. Waugh called it Four Seasons of Fun, depicting children at the camp having fun during spring, summer, fall, and winter. Over the next few years, Waugh continued with the Nan Miller Gallery and expanded the collection to include paintings on canvas. Eric also continued his work on cruise ships and enjoyed traveling and creating art around the world, from Russia to Rome, South America to the Egyptian pyramids, and everywhere in between. In mid-2012, after a few years of a dismal economy, personal issues, and losing the will to paint, Waugh went through a major depression. This took a devastating toll on him and his 23-year marriage. Eric spent close to two months in his studio not creating a single painting. Most people did not know what he was going through as he continued to offer paintings from his private collection. Juan needed to write a new, positive chapter in his life. He always wanted to make a move to California and this seemed like the perfect time. He packed up his personal belongings and whatever he could fit into a U-Haul trailer and he set off. As Eric traveled the 3,000-mile journey, he was nervous about the uncertainty of what lied ahead. But always the optimist, he was reminded by the never-give-up attitude that his father instilled in him. He was not running away from anything. He was running towards opportunity. Over the next year, Wall was trying to find his groove in California. He did many live events throughout the year, including a residency at the historic U.S. Grant Hotel in San Diego and the iconic Riviera Resort in Palm Springs. Made famous by such notable guests as Marilyn Monroe, Frank Sinatra, and Elvis Presley. 
Waugh even had the honor to paint Frank Sinatra Jr. at the Riviera Resort live on New Year's Eve. Although Eric loved California, he just couldn't figure out where he fit in. At this time, he was searching for a new town he could call home. After some research, he packed up his things and headed to Austin in the great state of Texas. An artsy city touting itself as the live music capital of the world with a small town feel. This was just what Waugh was looking for. Waugh quickly immersed himself in the city, working on various projects, including a residency at the historic Driscoll Hotel. Waugh had found a lot of inspiration in Austin and was feeling good about the future. July 2016 is the month that will be remembered as a time that continuously stunned the public with shocking events at home and abroad. During this period of time, Eric was having difficulty staying focused and being in a positive mood, which is crucial to the creation of his art. Once again, Waugh was in a dark period and spent many days not wanting to face the world. Several days later, Waugh forced himself out of his home and went on a long walk to clear his mind. When he returned, he sat down at his computer. Within seconds, he knew what he had to do. He had to create something, something big once again. He wanted to inspire people to imagine again, to imagine a world filled with peace, love, and kindness. Waugh was inspired to create a 2,500 square foot painting of John Lennon based on a portrait he created the previous year. Waugh contacted his friends at Ace Hardware who had donated paint for his world's largest painting. They were 100% behind him and donated all of the materials to create this historic painting. Incredibly, it only took Wa 10 days, 88 hours, to create the 2,500 square foot painting at a facility near his home in Austin. Instead of canvas, Wa created the painting on house wrap, a strong, thin, and light material used in new home construction. Eric used over 12 gallons of Valspar Optimus latex paint, gold acrylics, and oversized Sharpies to create the painting. After he completed it, Waugh drove the painting titled Imagine Again all the way to New York City. He displayed it on September 21, 2016 on International Day of Peace. The exhibition of the painting also honored the 45th anniversary of the release of one of the greatest songs of all time. John Lennon's Imagine. The creation and exhibition of Imagine Again in New York City, as well as an impromptu tour of the painting in several other cities across America, brought a lot of recognition and media to the project, as well as Waugh's message of hope. As a direct result of Eric's efforts, Waugh was contacted by the editor of Forbes magazine and was asked to participate in a two-city artistic marathon creating artwork for the highly anticipated and world-renowned 30 Under 30 Forbes edition. Waugh flew to New York City at the end of November and spent three days creating art live during photo sessions of the 30 Under 30 recipients. He then flew to San Francisco to complete the series of 20 paintings. This was one of the most challenging and rewarding projects Waugh had ever been involved with. Over the next few months, Waugh was in high demand. He was utilizing his live painting skills to create works of art for such musical talents as Roger Hodgson of Supertramp, pop sensation Dea, and Sammy Hagar of Van Halen fame. Early in 2017, Waugh painted live to two of his comedic heroes, Steve Martin and Martin Short, at a benefit event in Sarasota, Florida. The Grammy Foundation invited Waugh to create a tribute painting live of renowned songwriter Leon Russell to the music of Hanson during an event at the South by Southwest Festival in Austin, Texas. The painting was later inducted into the Woody Guthrie Museum in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Waugh was back in New York City at B.B. King's Blues Club helping one of the many charitable causes he is involved with. Beat the Blues, hosted by CNN's Randy Kay, and benefiting the SAVE organization and the Jed Foundation, which helps to beat depression and to raise awareness for suicide prevention. 
Waugh created a New York-themed work of art to the music of Dana Fuchs, Bill Heller, and many more during this special night, filled with courage and hope. Eric's most recent work is taking on a fresh new interpretation of his stick figure forms, bold lines dissected with white sketching in an orderly, balanced, and harmonized union of color and form. Waugh calls this style of art pop fusion, a term he coined which blends many styles, such as cubism, pop art, and impressionism. This is similar to the term jazz fusion, which is the blending of many musical styles to create a new form of music. Eric creates fun, yet sophisticated art, celebrating life's joys. Waugh's artistic themes embrace the excitement and energy of urban life, romance, dance, music, pets, and still life. It reflects his own heartfelt passion for the arts and his appreciation for life's simple pleasures. Thousands of people around the world have been enjoying Eric's work for over 30 years. One Wa collector states that viewing Eric's paintings takes him away from the trials and tribulations of everyday life and allows him to find a moment of calm reflection from within. Another states that Waugh's art can connect not only to their eye, but also to their soul. Overall, most people state that it just makes them happy. Isn't that what we're all looking for? Happiness. Never one to sit still, Eric's passion for painting is fueled by the unknown. He tries not to plan too far into the future and enjoys living in the moment. Spontaneity in life, as well as in his art, brings excitement, joy, and positive emotion. Where is Waugh headed in the future? We're not too sure. But one thing's for certain. The future is bright.